Hello everyone, I am Kristen, a clerk here at McCracken County Public Library, and we are back today with another edition of our popular Conversations with the Writer series. I have my regular co-host here, the fabulous Tammy Blackwell, director at Marshall County Public Library, and today we have a guest, avid <laughs> reader, book blogger, Michelle Champion. Her day job is a student records clerk out at McCracken County, at McCracken County uh, School System. But today she's going to talk to us about reading and blogging and how she manages it all. Um, before we get started, I just want to mention that the opinions we have expressed today are our own and not of our places of employment. So if you get mad at anyone, just get mad at us. Although we're not going to be that controversial, right, ladies? No, no of no. course not. All right, so um, let's get started today. And uh -oh. I just dropped my pen. Hang on a second. <laughs> let's get started. Um, one of the things I've just been interested in, I've been following you for a little bit yeah. on Facebook and everything. How, and I knew you were a reader because you read more than pretty much anyone I know. Wow. But how did you <laughs> get, and I thought I read a lot until I met Michelle. How do you. How did you get into the blogging aspect? I looked at your blog. You've been doing this about 2009-ish, 2010-ish. Like yes. How yes. did you get into that? I was just looking for a way to get books. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, yeah, so um, where I was living didn't have a library. And <gasps> I was, tr I know, I, it's terrible. And so um, I was trying to find a way to get books because it's very expensive when you have a reading habit. And so I discovered that the publishers will send books to people if they will blog about them or promote them. And so um, what I did was write to a couple of the publishers. Um, Dutton is one that sends me lots of books and they would send books and I would just write my review. And sometimes you get like a little blurb with your name on it in the little publications that they send out. So that's how it started. Oh, okay. Yes. So I, and then I moved to a town with a library and I didn't do it as much. And then I decided, yes, I still want to do this. I want to have like a little cult following. And so I kept it up and I've tried to increase that over the last few years. Okay. So how did you pick what publishers you wanted to reach out to? Were there publishers that wrote books you were interested in or were you just like, or the publishers that you thought would respond or both? I, I, I started with Harlequin because they publish so many novels, and you can crack those Harlequin. books. I do too. I love <laughs> Harlequin. <laughs> Can't help it. I do. <laughs> so I thought, okay, what have I got to lose? So I wrote to them, and they sent me a few novels, uh, the the white novels, the one that you know, the white copy. Yes, I with the think, oval picture. Yes, on the I front. can't think of the name of those. The, what they call those in the trade, but they were all those white covers with the little red oval. They sent me those. They're all quick reads, and I just wrote about what mm -hmm. I thought about them. And then I branched out a little bit. I was trying to get the John Grisham. Can't get those for anything. He just, he won't, he won't send those out. But mostly it was romance novels. I guess because there's so many that are published all the time. And so they're looking for someone to promote that. Cause it's, it's, I'm sure it's a stiff marketing area, commercial area that, you know, they, they have a lot of competition. So I think that's how, so that's how I chose them. And then I realized that some publishers tended to send me more. Um, I've gotten some I did not like. I'm not big into fantasy, so I really haven't done those. And those publishers have dropped me off completely because I just, I, can't, I can't, just can't get into them. Um, but I get a lot of romance, mostly. Now, you're romance writer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there are a lot of blogs out there mm -hmm. based on romance. There's a She Blogs Romance I was looking at the mm -hmm. other night. There's Wendy the Super Librarian mm -hmm. who does um, their Smart Bitches Trashy Books, which I love. It's my favorite. Yes, Ooh. I love Smart I Bitches Trashy Books. I have a ginger that one. Oh, I love them. They're great. <laughs> oh. um, what, why do you think romance in general, or let me, I'm, I'm going to ask a different question. Do you think that there is a marketing budget for romance? Because a lot Mm -hmm. of what I see is authors promoting their own books mm -hmm. and these blogs, mm -hmm. which aren't paid, except Correct. in new material, except, in, new books. except yes. in books, which is, I don't want to sneeze at. No, that's, books are that's fabulous. Um, but do you think that they rely on this kind of guerrilla marketing so they don't have to put any money into it? I mean, that probably makes the most sense. Okay. Um, you know, 
you're not even though romance is billion dollar industry billion yeah um keeping some publishers afloat yes, i would say well, yes completely so keeping yeah. some publishers afloat yeah. It's still, those aren't the books that you're going to walk into, let's say, Books A Million here, and see a big cardboard right. thing, yeah. you know, display for. They don't do that. Um, I think also there may, it may just be that romance readers are very likely to take the opinions of other romance readers. That's, oh, a, that's good a good point. point. Yeah. Over, you know, because we are so many professional reviewers look down their nose at us you know mm -hmm. and so we aren't you know and a lot of times when you see something that's you know touted and you know one of those bigger things as a great romance novel and you read it and it's not actually a romance novel it doesn't tick the right boxes yes. because those aren't romance readers and so i think that relationship between book bloggers and romance works really well because we trust each other more than we trust outsiders. I'll agree with that. Uh, and yeah, I, I do too. I follow a lot of authors, romance authors on Twitter, and the worst thing you want to do is say something's a romance that's not a romance. Uh -huh. Does not have a happily ever after. It does yeah. not do have a happily ever after <laughs> because they will attack in mass and you will run and lick your wounds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, it's a good way which I'm fine with I, yeah. I understand that I mean don't tell me it's a romance if it's not a romance mm -hmm. uh, and some of these bigger authors that you read that are more of the, the prestige in I'll say um, mm -hmm. their publishing houses are kept afloat but all these little romance readers they want to keep in the back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they don't want to acknowledge mm -hmm. or um, market to in any way yeah right yeah and again, and we've talked about this, Tammy, before, is it be, again, I'm going to bring it up, I'm going to bring it up anytime I get a shot, is it because it's a female readership? I think, yes, I think mm -hmm. sexism and patriarchy plays very strongly into how romance is treated in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't just read romance. I don't. You read a ton of stuff. Yeah. And, How and, do you decide what you're well, reading? Well, I, I also wanted to tell you, too, that, that since digital books have become more prevalent, I, I've got digital platforms now where I request my books, mm -hmm. the, a, the AMBAX readers' copies, and um, they are primarily more general fiction or women's fiction. I, I don't tend to get auto-approved for the romance as much. I have to request those. But, like... Fiona Davis, every time she publishes a book, they always send me a copy of that digitally to read. Like, she's got one coming out in January, well, this month, um, the end of the month, and I read it last year. Okay. So, um, I, you know, it's kind of neat to, to get that, but it has switched. Now, now to answer your question, what was your no. question? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure you knew that the, it's, it's the, the whole advanced readers thing has switched since I started doing it, because now... Publishers don't send out as many hard copies of the books. They're harder to get. Yeah. The digital copies, though, I could get them all day long. And I want to get back to into that. that. Get back okay. to that because um, I have a lot, I have a couple questions on okay. that too. But how do you decide what you're reading? Is it? And I mean the things that you aren't sent. Mm -hmm. If Michelle is going out and about and she's browsing Amazon or she's browsing maybe not Amazon but she's browsing Craig County Library site. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for? What do you look for? What do you read? I'm the worst person in the world because I judge a book by its cover. I, I, I totally do. Um, I've got friends, you're one of them, that if you read a book, I'm very interested to see if when you get on Goodreads, if you rate a book highly, very likely it's going to go into my okay. TBR stash. Um, Pam, that also works here, is yes. the same way. If she is rated a book highly, very likely it's going to go into my TBR because you guys... Um, I can trust you that you guys read quality books, and so I can go with it. And you're honest with your reviews. I, and, I try. I don't always write a review, but mm -hmm. if something impacted me negatively or very positively, yes. I try to you're do so. You're on top of it. You yeah. always star them. You always give one, two, three, five stars. I do. I do do that. You always do that. 
Um, the other thing is some of these other book bloggers that I work with, if they write a book like, oh my gosh, I couldn't put it down, I very much get on the library website, put it on hold. I'm more of a digital reader these days mm -hmm. than a physical reader. So um, I am constantly perusing your catalog here to see what digital books we're getting in and try to get those on hold as quickly as possible. I'm always at the max on my holds here. <laughs> 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 always, always. Because I, I, I like to be the first one to read the book because I don't like spoilers. And ah. I don't like people ruining it for me. And I want to say, you got to read this. You, you must get this when it comes out. I want to be that person. <laughs> now, you have, and before we get into ARCs, you have multiple library cards. You just don't, I you do. don't have one just here at McCracken. I have five library cards. Um, I have uh, McCracken. And then I have Campbell County. And I'm trying to think real quick. Warren County. And then I have the Library of Philadelphia and the Brooklyn Public Library, and I pay for those. Okay. Do you, I'll you only did, pay for the last two. The, the uh, Brooklyn the, and the Philadelphia? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you see that look to the camera? What? You don't have a Marshall County Public Library. Card. I tried to get one, and you had to go there, so I just haven't been. I have, I have looked into that. Uh, Louisville's the same way. I have to go to the library to get one. So I, I've, I've been looking. Actually, I, I'll show I've, you. Done, I've done two blog posts about how to get non-resident library cards, uh -huh. and you're, you're mentioned in one of them. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll show you the online form we have now. And Great. <laughs> I would love to get one. <laughs> I collect library cards. <laughs> and I knew that about this one. Mm -hmm. I was interested in that. I knew that about you, that you mm -hmm. had library cards from multiple mm -hmm. places, which um, I don't know if I can keep that straight, but... I, I am managing, and I also keep up with the stats on if I were purchasing the book, how much this book would cost me, and at the end of the year, I figure up, because I have to justify spending the money for these library cards, because mm -hmm. yeah. they're not cheap. I mean, $50, is, it's not cheap. So I like to figure up how much I would have spent had I purchased those books, and you guys have come in second the last couple of years, so that's great for our little local community library. Mm -hmm. ah. I, I do get a lot from you, but I do get a lot at Brooklyn also. Those are my two highest users just because um, the, the content, the catalogs are so varying. Okay. And I like to be eclectic in my reading, as you stated. I'm yeah. very eclectic <laughs> in it. <laughs> All right, so I want to get into arts because I, I know what they are. I don't know how to get them. Um, and a quick personal story, uh, probably, oh, it's been a year or two now, Tammy messaged me and a couple other people and said, hey, does anyone want to read a little something I've been working on? And at the time, I was just like, I was swamped. And so yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't, uh, I said, no, I don't have time right now. I'll do it. <laughs> and um, probably, I don't know, maybe six months, eight months later, she published something. Uh -huh. And so I told a friend of mine, oh, you've got to read this new book that Tammy put out. It's great. Um, it was Farmer Brown. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. and she said, I read that. That's the one she sent out, you know, six months ago asking for readers. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I missed out. <laughs> so, you could have had your words on the book jacket. I could have. <laughs> so how do, how do ARCs work? They're advanced reader copies, mm -hmm. correct? And how do you get those where... Like I've heard, I've seen a lot of talk about net. This is released on NetGalley. Net this is here. What do you do? Edelweiss plus... Um, those are the two biggest. Uh, NetGalley is my favorite. It's a lot easier to get approved. Okay. Uh, it's a free to set up an account. And if you are a librarian or a book blogger or you want to be a book influencer, it's very easy to get started. At first, it's a little hard to get approved. So you just got to keep trying to get approved. And eventually, as you do more reviews, you'll get approved for more. You'll get auto approved for some publishers. As soon as they publish a book, they'll send you a, a message say do you want to read this and you can read it um i've read some books that won't be published until way later this year so you get copies before and some of them want you to say do you like the story because we have time to rework it and some of them just say no it's done this is the way it's going to be we just want people to give it a good review so it will mm -hmm. sell well most of the ones i get are the latter okay i have one one author i read for that wants me to look for story and content spelling and all that, but everybody else, they want that it's ready to go. It's already hit the publisher. They're already printing the books, and they just want people to say this is fantastic. 
Okay. What do you mean by proof? How did, what is the approval process? You request it and they decide if they like you? Do you have to? Yeah, on NetGalley, on NetGalley, you hit request. So there's a little button that says request under the book. And it wants to know, do you like the cover? Do you like the author? Do you like the subject? Um, are you interested in the description? And that's basically it. It's just like, are they going to choose me? Come on, choose me. On Edelweiss, you have to say why you want to read the book. You have okay. to write. A, you have to write a couple sentences to say why, and the publisher reads that. And if they don't like it, you will not get the book. Oh, okay. If they like it, they'll give it to you. It, that's why it's harder to get it on there. Okay. Now, some authors will automatically approve you if you follow them on Facebook. They'll do like a little contest and say, "Today only, from ten to one, you can get a free copy of my book on NetGalley. Please review it." If you don't review, they won't send them to you. So, like, the first okay. one's that you're taking a chance. So, if you don't put a review either on Barnes & Noble or Amazon, Goodreads, a blog. How do they track that? How can they track that? I don't know about the blog, if they visit that or not. But I know that they look at Amazon. Because you do it, when you're ready to review it, you hit um, finish or whatever on NetGalley. And then they ask you to do your review. And it says, do you want to publish it to Goodreads? There's a little box uh, you check. Do you want to publish okay. to Barnes & Noble? And then they'll send you an email when the book is published and say, would you go back and do it on Amazon now? Because Amazon won't let you do it in advance. It has to be a published book. Yeah. And um, they ask you to do it wherever. And if you hashtag anything on Twitter, they give you a hashtag they want you to use for the book. Okay. So the more you promote it, the more you put your reviews out there, the more books you're going to get approved for reading. Okay. It's, it's okay. Re relatively easy. You just have to do a little legwork. <laughs> okay. Now, what is the benefit of that to an author? Is there? It, I'm sure there is much benefit. There to is an author. a ton of benefit to an author. Um, so the rise in book bloggers happened around when you started, 2009, 2010. That was also the rise of self-publishing. Oh yeah. And ah. the two of them. It was like this marriage made in heaven mm -hmm. that they yeah. came together. And if it wasn't for book bloggers, I don't think self-publishing would have became the legitimate thing that it is today. Okay. okay. Um, you know, what was happening were, you know, book bloggers like you getting started out, maybe not getting as many books right. that they wanted to review from those review sources because that was still, you know, when they were sending out the mm -hmm. paper ones. Um and so the self-published authors were reaching out to book bloggers and being like, hey, I have this new book, would you read it? I, you know, whatever. And I mean, just basically begging. And it was from that where self-publishing really got its legitimacy mm -hmm. is because these book bloggers were reading some really great books that were being written and um, talking them up and putting those reviews on Amazon and so everything. they were getting free advertising. Yes, it was, yeah. you know, and I mean, that, so me personally, I have gotten a lot of, you know, um, I think a lot of my career is thanks to book bloggers. Just, mm -hmm. and I mean, it wasn't me necessarily reaching out all the time either. It was easy for book bloggers you know, when we first started out self-publishing, most of us were selling our books for 99 cents on Amazon. Right. Yeah. Well, 99 cents is nothing. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. less than a cup of coffee. Um, so, you know, book bloggers and people were buying those. And, you know, it was okay if they only made it a few pages in and didn't finish. Right. But the ones they did finish, they would review and they would talk about. And that's, that's exactly how I went from one month selling like 20 copies and thinking, hey, that was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. And then the next month I'd sold 400 and then the next was several thousand. And it was all yeah. thanks to that, to book bloggers and people doing the reviews. I can see that. I mean, I really yeah. can't. Uh, Harper Lynn is the author I read for when she writes, finished writing a book, mm -hmm. I, I read for her. And she has done that. She's self-published and uh, she's gotten very big in the cozy mystery mm -hmm. world now and I really think it's because she has this crew is what she calls us and we review it we we promote it for her yeah yeah mm -hmm. which yeah. is great because she just starts writing the next one yeah <laughs> exactly yeah I mean, because the the promotion does take away from the writing and yeah. all that yeah so um it is yeah it's just honestly that really I think book bloggers have literally changed the game for publishing. 
Um, and I don't know if you've noticed, I feel like maybe it's not quite as popular as it was about, I don't know, 10 years ago, but the ones that have stuck through it, their word is very, um, you know, people take that to heart. I would say automatically respected. Yes. And mm -hmm. yeah, I will, there is a couple of blogs that I follow and because of that, Establish history. I trust when they post something. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this makes sense. So you find yeah. yourself getting that book. Yeah, I, I did the yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I find out there's another. There's a, a smart bitches trashy books. They also did like a sale yes. listing, and mm -hmm. I follow that. And yeah, and it's really up. bad for your wallet because you're buying Very like bad. five books a week. Well, yeah, <laughs> and I do do that. Yes, I do do that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um. Does now something that I wanted to get into um a little bit ebook prices to libraries is insane yeah, absolutely completely 100 percent insane um why do why do you think publishers and in my mind it's because publishers think that's their we're their competition that libraries mm -hmm. are their competition not something that feeds the beast something mm -hmm. that will market mm -hmm. like a book blogger would so why is it okay for Mich for them to send free books to michelle here mm -hmm. but heaven forbid the library pay less than i don't know what was it now 50 60 dollars a license or um, something I depending mean, i literally just did a order for libby yesterday no day before yesterday um and it completely depends on the publisher the popularity of the book but what you have to understand, when I purchase a book for Libby, it also, I have to choose whether it's going to expire in 12 months or 24 months mm -hmm. or yeah. 48 months or whatever. Or um, some models, it'll be after X number of checkouts yeah. that yeah. it expires. I hate that checkout I hate that thing. Too. So not thing. only is it, I mean, think about how many books set, can sit on a shelf in a library for mm -hmm. decades. Yeah. And here I am saying, not only am I going to say that we're this is only 24 months that we're yes. keeping this, I am paying you at least 10 times what it costs to buy this ebook on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, we're talking $60. Some of them are literally $90-something, like a James mm -hmm. Patterson or something oh, like bet. that. Yeah. You know, and God bless him, he comes out with a new book every month, right. literally yeah. every month. Right. Um, and so here you are just, and again, it expires in so many months and so you have to repurchase. Um, I don't know, it, it, it's a point of contention between publishers and libraries and I don't think we're coming up with an answer, but I think what they see is one book to one person as opposed to they understand that people use libraries. I think that shows more than anything that publishers understand the importance and the usage of libraries. Yeah. Yes. Because they know that it's not just going to be one person who reads right. it when they sell it to right. a public library. Yeah. They understand how much we get used and how important we are to our communities. And they know that because we are going to do everything that we can to meet the community need that we are going to keep forking over that money. Yeah. Oh, they got us over a barrel. They I do. didn't think about it like that. I, I didn't either. I know yeah. as, as a reader, I, I hate that when, um, I don't I don't know that McCracken site does it. I'm not sure which one does. I know Brooklyn does because I just checked out a book this morning. But it says our license is expired. If we renew the license, you'll be the first to be able to check it out. So I'm on hold for it. Yeah. But I may never get it. Yes. Because yes. they may never renew the license. Uh-huh. But then they may renew it today and I may get it today, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, I... It's frustrating I had as a, a reader. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah. a patron reach out this week and she uh -huh. was like, I don't understand what this message is. I'm halfway through this series. And oh, I was just like, yeah. okay, I'll it's go, just, you know, yeah. because, you know, you don't, you hate for somebody to be halfway through a series mm -hmm. and not be able to finish it. And if one person's willing to reach out and say, I really want to read this. And actually, when we go in, we can see how many holds have been placed. And right. I had like seven holds just at Marshall County. And of course, Libby so it was just covers viable. all of Kentucky usually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there was like seven for me. There was over 10 for the entire state i was right. like 
well, of course I'm going to buy these books again then, yes. you know? Yeah. Yes. Um, and that that's how that works. So, um, and I mean, this is a series that's a little older, so you can see the demand mm-hmm. that is there for eBooks and libraries. Yes. I mean, I'll it's, agree it's that. very, very high. Um, I can say, I can't think of eBooks itself, but Marshall County Public Library um, has over 3,000 audio books borrowed from Hoopla every month. Wow. I believe that. I mean, oh, there's every a lot month. of people that are, are switching over to the audiobooks. Yeah. yeah. And and so, I mean, these, I mean, this is pretty much very off topic, but there is this huge need out there, and we are going to continue to meet that need. Mm-hmm. It would be nice if publishers helped us instead yes. of took advantage of us. Yeah. But here we are. I mean, but you're a guaranteed customer. You know, you're yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like guaranteed you're going to come back and you're going to buy yes, their next book. Because we don't need, you know, individuals need the book bloggers to talk them into reading right. something. You know, right. libraries, we just need somebody saying, I want to read it, and there we are. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, I, that, that's the part I never understood, though. But you guys are, you're definitely going to purchase from them again. We have. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I mean, there's what, five publishers left? And they're cannibalizing each other. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's ridiculous. So, you know, we can't fight five multi-billion dollar in, you know, Correct. companies. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, because we're spending all of our money on James <laughs> their, digital, their digital yeah. material and therefore <laughs> cannot afford a yeah. lawyer. <laughs> I, I think one of those that, that you guys are having issues with are also very hard for us to get advanced readers copy books of. Um, Hatchet is really, yeah. really bad about approving you know yeah. they're they're really really bad about it you have to have like a high net galley rating i have 80 percent um i have 80 percent positive feedback or whatever good feedback whatever net galley calls it i have a button that says 80 percent, so i can get some of them that others can't but if you don't have like 98 percent of the books i've gotten i've reviewed so i'm one of their better ones they'll send to mm-hmm. so i've gotten some of theirs but then some of the people i talk to on the internet like I can't I can't get a book from them for anything because you've only got 50 percent it's just weird (laughs) Uh, and I have taken advantage of my employment here Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a series I was reading on Libby and I couldn't get the next one I just emailed the person and he hey I need this book (laughs) not that anyone else could have done like the patron reach out you could have done the exact same thing I just like to feel like I'm cutting a corner Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Makes me feel important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kristen, but, I've done it too, so you're not that important. <laughs> hey! Don't take that from okay, me, Okay, I'm just saying. I've, <laughs> I've emailed Justin and said, hey. <laughs> but, um, but I've also, as I've become more aware of how much they've cost, uh-huh. I've thought, am I the only person in the, you know, that would want this? Oh, yeah. And I just don't reach out. I'm like, I don't, I know they'll get it. And even if I was, a, you know, didn't right. work here, they would get it, right? But I, I think twice about it because right. I don't want you to spend. I, I don't want to spend stretch library resources. Here's mm-hmm. the thing: I, I have back in access like to Libby. I cannot think of a book that I've looked at that didn't have multiple requests, Re- requests okay. and readings. Uh-huh. Um, you know, you know, there's some that are available now, but if you look at its history, they all get checked out. Mm-hmm. I mean, they all really do. And so there is a big market. There is a for huge, the digital platform. huge yeah. market for I'll the agree. digital platform. Okay. Um, I mean, it's and there's still a huge market for paper. Paper mm-hmm. too. You know, mm-hmm. we still have during the lockdown um, in 2020. You know, we had a lot of people for the first time try the digital stuff. Right. And I would say maybe 25 percent of them stuck with it. Mm-hmm. They were like, "Ha! Huh, a new world has opened yes. up for me." That's how I felt when I first and started. And I honestly <laughs> feel like they re—they're checking out more now that they're doing it uh-huh. digitally. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. But those other seventy-five percent of people were like, "Thank God you're open again. I can get a real book." <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> they want to feel it, yeah. and smell, smell it, it, and yeah, everything. Yeah. Yes. yeah, possibly taste it if they're a toddler. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you know. I think 
there is a huge market for the digital stuff, mostly because it is so easy. Mm -hmm. And so people who maybe read 10 books a year before are now reading 15 books a year mm -hmm. yeah. because they don't have to wait until the library's open. Correct. They don't have to call and put mm -hmm. stuff on hold. They can do it themselves at 2 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. when they can't yep. sleep if they want to. Right. Um, I love so, that feature. <laughs> I do. I, I love, that's why I started. You know? I love that if I'm reading a series and I finish, you know, book two mm -hmm. at seven o'clock at night and I'm like, what happens next? I can go ahead right. and by 7.05 be reading book three. Yes. Right. I, I think that's it. great. Um, so, yeah, there's just, uh, there's both needs there. But it is much easier for us as a library system to buy physical copies but don't ever worry that you're the only person going to read a digital copy because, I I'm mean, not. you're not. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a quick jump right here. Um, we've talked a lot about Libby. We've talked about Overdrive. In February, Overdrive is dropping the Overdrive yes. app in favor of just the Libby app. You may be thinking, okay, if you are a Kindle user, the Libby app is not in the Kindle store as of yet. Mm -hmm. Amazon and Overdrive are fighting about something, probably money, I don't know. Yeah. But it's not in the app, it's not there yet. Um, if you will go to McCracken County's lab, uh, McCracken County Library site, www.mclib.net, we have instructions for you on how to get the Libby app on your Kindle. I'm sure Marshall County will have something similar. Um, or you can come in and talk. As soon as we steal it from a cracking county. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're stealing a lot block. from a cracking county lately. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm working on a blog post on that too. Because yeah. I, I, I usually go through the overdrive. So anybody I've taught how to do it, I've taught through the overdrive. So now i got to go a different way yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So check our website. We do have an article on it. I have some friends that have tried it, said it works great. Some staff here have tried it and it works great. So just keep that in mind. And of course, both Marshall County and McCracken County will keep you up on how to get your books because we know you need to get your books. So yes. And those of you who have not switched to Libby, I like it so much Libby. better. So yes. you, you know, every time you change something, there's that awkward period where like where is stuff but um once you get it you're gonna be like oh this is so much better <laughs> yeah um before we get into because we've been going around 30 minutes so before we get into um our suggestions where do you want your blogging to go where what would you like to be what would you like the mm -hmm. outcome to be i want to be a book influencer and I, you know i want i want to be famous <laughs> <laughs> I do. Go for it. I, I'm trying so hard to be famous. I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, I just, I want people to trust me. I love that I have this gang of readers. That's what I've got on my uh, net galley thing. I have this gang of readers that they, they look to me for suggestions. I'm staring narcissist. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be, but <laughs> but uh, I, I, like, I like that they trust me to find them a book because a lot of people don't read like I read and they may read 10 books a year and it's really honoring when they say, I trust you to pick out this book for me. Um, every month I pick out a book, I ask people to read along with me that I think is fabulous and uh, a lot of my friends are reading it. I think that's fun. So that's where I want to go with it. I want to be a book influencer. I want to be it on a bigger scale. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Um, real quick. Also, Michelle, and I want to talk to you about this offline, Okay, but I'm going to mention it here. <laughs> Michelle was on an episode of ABC's show, The Hustler, in February. That show is on Hulu. Oh, if I didn't know Hulu, that. It is. That's where I watched it. <laughs> okay. Was on Hulu. Okay. Um, so you're, you got your toe in famous. Yeah. I'm trying to get on Jeopardy, too. <laughs> okay. Yes. Good luck with I, that. I am, I am trying hard to get on Jeopardy. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna open my tablet again. Okay. Close. Okay. So, what suggestions would you like to give our our audience here? What What should we What should we be reading? Something you've read that oh. you want us to read? Well, my book for January is The Last Dance of the Debutante by Julia Kelly. I don't know if you guys have read that. It's a um, I don't know. It's like a women's fiction book. It's a um, It's a very good book. It's about the last girls that were presented before the queen in 1958. Ah. I think it's really cute, but it's got this story 
that's going, hey, well, looky there behind it. It's not okay. just about the queen and these girls. There's this really interesting aspect over here. Uh, I think that is fabulous. I'm really looking forward to reading Run, Rose, Run by James Patterson. Okay. So I'm telling everybody, I think that's going to be fabulous. Dolly Parton and James Patterson, you know? Have y'all seen mm -hmm. that yet? Yeah. No. They're writing yeah. the book together. Oh. It's coming out soon. He okay. has now chained Dolly Parton into his basement along with Bill Clinton. Correct. And, <laughs> and all those other people he has yes. chained down there and writing books. Yes. So. <laughs> it's going to be great. And, um... Of course, I'm looking for suggestions if you guys have any for me as well. Um, something I read, and this is, um, it's, it's, I'll shortcut it, but I wound up joining a book club based out of Canada. And <laughs> I went to <laughs> their meeting, to sit, their January book, they pick a book a month, the January uh -huh. book is called Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Mm -hmm. And I flippin' loved it. What it's was it about? Based mm -hmm. on um, Greek mythology, oh. actually. And it's about how Hades and Persephone got together. Ooh. And it kind of has like a bit of a modern spin on it. There's these 12, this whole council that's run by Zeus. And Hades, no, Persephone has been promised to Zeus in marriage. She does not want to marry Zeus. Uh, Zeus. She ran away and wound up with Hades. And he and Zeus are mortal oh. enemies um it's very spicy there's um sex scenes are spicy so All just right. be aware of that so the new york public library um right. reviewed this book as have you ever heard the story of hades and persephone and thought what that needs is some bdsm oh that's exactly correct yeah oh. <laughs> that's that's it that's, that's it that that was new york public library's yeah. review so then that's mm. that's perfect <laughs> The second book comes out on Tuesday. I've already pre-ordered it. And again, real quick, put in lie to the home that libraries don't help publishers. I checked this book out on Hoopla. Mm -hmm. And three chapters in, I returned my Hoopla copy, I bought it, and pre-ordered the second one. Uh -huh. So that and it's a, look it's at a what feeder. You just did. Exactly. Yes. It's uh -huh. a feeder. It's a and, feeder. And I've done that as well. You yeah. like this book so much, I'm going to purchase it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to suggest I just started reading Homecoming King by your favorite Penny Reed. Uh, that was on my list. Uh, <laughs> but I've just started it, but so far I really like yeah. it. I also read If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. And this is Disney is doing a series with a bunch of authors to kind mm -hmm. of put a modern take on certain fairy tales. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Cinderella. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's based on uh, a Cinderella idea. Her mm -hmm. parents are dead. She lives with a stepmother who isn't an evil stepmother. I was very glad about that. And the stepmother is a producer of a reality dating show. And she winds up as a contestant on the show. And it, oh. I loved it. It was very cute. It's it great. Adorable. Uh, Jasmine Guillory has one based on, I believe, I think it's Beauty and the Beast. Either Beauty and the Beast or Princess of the Frog. I can't remember which one later this year. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that book. But those are, oh, and The Singles Table by Sarah Desai. It is, uh, she's an Indian writer. Mm -hmm. And it's, woman is stuck at the singles table at all the weddings because she's not married and all the aunties want her to get married and she kind of fancies herself as a matchmaker right. so she meets this man at the singles table and said i'm going to find you a wife you need a wife i'm going to find you a wife and he's like okay whatever just leave me alone mm -hmm. and it turns out maybe she's the wife mm -hmm. <laughs> But it's really cute. Sarah Desai, uh, so The Singles cute. Table. It's part of a series. Do not read The Marriage Game. It's not good. But uh, The Singles Table is very good. I didn't start The Marriage Game. Right? Don't. Mm -mm. It's not good. Don't mm -mm. do that. Well, I do want to tell you, too, Fiona Davis has a new book coming out in a couple weeks. It's fantastic. It's about the frick in New York City. Every book she writes is about a landmark in New York City. All of my little readers that I'm in a group with, uh, we have a book club that we meet um, one Wednesday a month. And we all read every book Fiona does, so I'm really excited for everybody to get this one. Okay, I'll have to check her out. It's called The Magnolia Palace, but every book is a New York landmark with like a, not rom not romance, this is just a, it's just a little story around it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, tell me what you got. So, Homecoming King, of course, I know we're all surprised that Tammy has recommended yet another Penny Reed book, yeah. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, this is a completely new series, it does not really 
tie in necessarily with the rest of them, although you do know it's the same world because of some security detail that was put on somebody at some point in the book, but you have to really know your knitting in the series. <laughs> ah. I was like, oh, wait a minute, I know those people. Um, and then I finally got around to reading Sarah McLean's Bombshell. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I that was it. one I'd really put off just simply because as those of you who've been following the videos and how they've become basically my therapy sessions. No, I have really struggled with reading and I know that whenever I started it, I would love it, but I didn't want to start it when I was in a bad headspace, yes, you know? Entirely. Um, so I finally got to where I was like, yeah, I think I'm ready for this. And it was absolutely delightful oh, cool. as okay. every other Sarah that. McLean is. Uh -huh. um, I will say the prologue, you might skip. Oh, okay. I personally that I started the prologue probably five times oh. and would put the book to the side and finally I was like I'm skipping this prologue going straight to chapter one and when I did that I was done in two days okay so That's so put the yeah yeah just just skip the prologue go straight in I want to move that okay. up now because it's been <laughs> on my list forever I've read some Sarah McLean I like her mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah so I'll have to add that I have my list I, is so long I like this one it's a gang <laughs> no. of women that are taking matters into their own hands okay when it yeah. comes you know men have all the power men have all the influence and you know women end up in marriages that are awful and they fix it and so they're okay they're kind of a ragtag quirky group of women and i can't wait to see each of their stories we start with cicely who we know from other books right. um, her sisters all got married in another series Okay. So, um, we start with her, but all of her friends are rather odd and fun, and so I'm excited. Oh, okay. okay, I'm excited about that. Thank you, ladies, yes. for those suggestions. Take those to heart. They're good. Um, and we've been going on for a while, so I guess we'll bring us to a close. I want to thank Michelle for joining thank us you. I'm today. So it's thank so you. great. <laughs> um, and I want to now appeal to the audience real quick. Um, I would like to do a series with Michelle um, where we talk about books that she's go we're going to continue conversations with the writer and it's going to go in that in our in that vein but I want to do a, a series with Michelle where we talk about blogging and books that just where she just suggests books basically I would love it yeah <laughs> but would you love it would you love it <laughs> so what I would like for you to do if that's something that you would be interested in us doing interested in seeing put a comment um, on this video um, when it goes out on our Facebook page and let us know what you think. Would you like to have a blogging series? Me and Michelle just kind of gab about books a little bit um, and there might be a prize in it for you if you add a comment. So I want to ask you to do that. Uh, Tammy, as always, it is a pleasure to have you. Love being here. I just love having you here. And we'll meet, um, we'll discuss topics for our next Conversations with the Rhino video. And you could also comment and tell us what you would like for us to talk about. That too, yes. Because I, you know, I would like to have, a, I mean, I have like, I'm sure Tammy does too, topics that are a mile long, but maybe they're topics that only interest me and Tammy. So, <laughs> if there are topics that would interest you, absolutely comment on this video. Let us know what you think. Um, and I guess we'll close. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. And on behalf of Craig County Public Library, have a great afternoon.